Dear God, thank you so much for everything you've done for us. Thank you for the weather. God, I pray over the weather this coming week for camp that it would be um, wonderful and that we would, no one would get too hot and that you would keep us all safe. God, I pray over the leaders and over the campers as well that you would just feel all of us that we may pour into each other. I pray this morning for Pastor Danny as he brings the word and I pray for the worship team as they lead us um, into your presence. God, I pray that you would open up our hearts to get what you have for us today and help us not to worry about what other people are getting or what other people might think if we raise our hands, God, but I pray that you would help our hearts to communicate with yours, God, because that is all that matters. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, if you want to stand with us and worship together this morning. The battle belongs to him this morning. When all I see is the battle, you see the victory.
He's so worthy of our praise. I so appreciate um, what Danny has to share with us this morning. Talk about balance and just recognizing that yeah, we're, we're in Christ and we're in God and in the Holy Spirit. We need to find out who that is. Sometimes we don't think about that. We need to know who he is for sure. Um, happy Father's Day, by the way. Um, uh, it's, that's a, being a father is a big task. That's, there's a lot of responsibility involved in being a father. And, um, obviously some people don't take it as seriously as it should, and it can cause problems in the home and cause problems with children. And as they grow up, they don't become the people that they really need to be. And, uh, I was, I've been attending a, a meeting with some male friends of mine, uh, and we've been going through this program called Authentic Manhood. It's been really, really good, um, but just realizing the significance of being a father, being a good father to my sons and the impact that that will have on their lives. Um, there's so many wounds that can take place that many times we're even unaware of as we're growing up and as we're raised, um, especially when there's an absent father or even a father who's physically present, but he's just not engaged. He's just not emotionally there. He's not mentally there. Um, and sometimes that happens because of their own upbringing, because of their own wounds. Um, but just realizing the impact of that and how significant it is. We're, we are very much subject to our past. We're subject to how we were raised, to the things that we've experienced, but we're not identified by those things. We can move beyond our scars and our hurts and, and all of those things. Um, but it's important for us to realize that though earthly fathers fail many times, our heavenly father will never, ever fail us. Though many times we've seen completely absent fathers, our heavenly father is never absent. He's ever present. He's always there. And in the same way that Many fathers may be present, but they're not engaged. Our Heavenly Father is always engaged and listening. He's always got His ear and His face toward us, seeking connection with us. He's made Himself, His self available to us, and He wants to connect with us. All we have to do is turn to Him, open our hearts, and connect with Him. He's there every time, every time. Thank you, Father. There's a space in every beating heart. There's a longing that reaches past the storm.
Happy Father's Day to all you dads out there. Um, it may have been 15 or 20 years ago that Dr. Don Hamby preached a message. And, uh, and the point of the message was, one of the points was that Doc used to do a prison ministry and he would go to prisons and minister to incarcerated men. And this was a study he'd conducted himself, so it was an accurate one, you know, not like the ones our government does. And uh, that was free. Happy Father's Day. That was a free one. So he can, and one of the things he found out through these years of ministering to these guys that it wasn't that they had a deadbeat dad or maybe, a, you know, some substance abuse problems or maybe he was abusive. What ended up to one of the one of the main factors that ended up to those guys being incarcerated was their dad was absent. He just wasn't there. And. I didn't have that experience. Uh, many of you know my dad. He was at our stuff constantly. And I remember when I was in the eighth grade, my brother was a senior, and we, we liked to play sports. Okay, we had neighborhood sports games going on all the time. A lot of times they ended in fist fights or bloody stuff. And that's okay. Listen, you need to have some kind of competitive drive in your kids. The world's a competitive place. And listen, I, now I coach our daughter's team sometime. Now that they're getting older, I don't have to be like, I'm a big effort guy. There's a lot of things you can't control in life and in your ministry and in your walk of faith, but you can control your effort. 100% of the time, you can control it. And I'll tell those girls, I can stand a lot. You can turn it over. You can dribble it off your knee, whatever. But if you're lazy, your rear end's going to be right beside me on the bench. Because that you can control. So I'm an eighth grader. My brother's a senior. And we go, my dad goes to Ava to watch. So there was some, I think there was a snow event. And they'd rescheduled a bunch of stuff. So dad goes to Ava to watch my brother play basketball. And my mom goes to Thayer. And when I was in eighth grade, listen, it matters to eighth graders might not matter to you. We had a real good team. Big, lanky guys, strong guys. They were mean. And we would full court press other teams. And most of the games we played, the other team would call a timeout with about two minutes, to, uh, about two minutes into the game. And a lot of times we'd be up 15 or 16 to nothing. Because we'd trap them and lay up, trap them and lay up. And see, the other teams knew we were going to do that. And a lot of times they were beat before they even got on the floor. Now listen, some of you wake up every morning beat before you get out of bed. And you know why? Because you're giving a lackluster effort. That's why. So we go to Thayer. They tip it off. We get the tip. We go down a score. And then here comes the press. And we're pressing. And it's a steal. And it's a layup. And it's a steal. And it's a layup. And next thing you know, it's 12 to nothing. They call the timeout. Like has happened most of the games in our junior high career. And I remember kind of jogging to the bench. And everyone was, you know, the Bears fans are standing up clapping. And I didn't see my dad. And just for a second, it struck me. Like, hmm. And then I remembered, oh, yeah, he's a day but watching Brett. Now, listen. I remember that. I'm 42 years old. I remember that like it was yesterday. So you dads, you don't have to have the right things to say. You don't have to have a speech prepared. You don't have to come with your $100 bills falling out, although that helps. But being there matters. Being there matters. Showing up matters. All the important events in my life, my dad's been there. He's been there. He doesn't always, well, he usually has something to say. But I'll tell stories about my growing up, you know, dad's different than he was, you know, 25 years ago. But you know what? When we got married, Audrey and I got married, he was going through the, we had tuxes. People wore tuxes back then, you know, in the old days. We wore a tux when he got married. And he, I remember him finding DL's coat. And he said, Davey boy, this must be yours. He said, it's as wide as it is long. You know, those kind of things. That's right, that's what a man's coat. 
When I was a junior, we played West Plains in football. And we beat them right at the end of the game. And the, these things are just things that happen in life. And it, it was a, it was a, I didn't realize until I got out how physical those games were. Usually somebody was in the hospital after them. And I caught a pass along the, the, the stadium side late in the game and ran down the sideline, stiff-armed a guy, and got, I mean, smoked out of bounds. And I remember sliding into the West Plains track. And it was third down, and it was a big play. The next play, Casey Pitts got a touchdown, and we beat him. But I remember I, I slid into the track, and I went to get up, and I felt somebody pulling my, like helping me up, and it was my dad. And he was patting me on the shoulder pads, and he was fired up. <laughs> when I was in high school, he stayed fired up. But listen, you don't have to have everything to say. You don't have to have an agenda. You just got to show up. Now listen. Your, Aaron hit on it. Your, heavenly, or your, your earthly father can fail you. You know why? Because he's a man. But listen, your heavenly father doesn't fail you. And the word of God says this. He walks closer than a brother. You could get on an airplane today and fly 24 hours to Australia and get out. And he's just as close then as he was. And see, and unlike your, your, your uh, uh, earthly father, he won't fail you. He won't shortchange you. The word says he has your portion for you. How much confidence would you have in life if you knew that the God of the universe that loves you and created you, created the mountains and the seas and the rivers and everything that goes on in nature he created is walking right beside you. Now listen to me. One of the things you do as an outdoorsman is you look for evidence of whatever you're after. You know, a turkey's gonna leave a feather, they're gonna leave some other things, or they're gonna leave a track, or you're gonna see them. And those are things you pursue. So if right now, if you looked at your spiritual self in the mirror and you couldn't see one ounce of God, any kind of joy, happiness, peace, love, kindness, you maybe need to check your attitude at the door. Maybe you're giving a lackluster effort and God's got you on the bench. And he stands you up and says, listen, you're giving a lousy effort, but I believe in you. I believe in you. You can do more. Get back out there. He walks closer than a brother. He'll never leave you and forsake you. The word says this. He knit you together in your mother's womb. Not one of your days came. Uh, he ordained every day before one of them came to be. Say, he is with me. Say it again. That, that was pretty weak. You can give a better effort than that. He is with me. He's with you, church. And not only that, he loves you. Father God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for not leaving us. Lord, we thank you for loving us when we're unlovable. We thank you for patience, kindness, joy, strength, wisdom, direction. We thank you that you don't leave us, God. That you're with us and we can walk confidently in life knowing the God of the universe is with me. If you're a born-again believer, you've accepted Jesus Christ in your heart, he's in you. He's in you. He's beside you. He's in front of you. He's behind you. He's upon you, and he's within you. And we thank you for that, God. We acknowledge that this morning. We thank you for that. We thank you for the example that you've set. Father God, help us, us dads in the room just to show up. Show up. Ushers, you come, Lord. We thank you for who, the, who you are. We love you this morning. In Jesus' name.
and give the Lord a hand clap. You can be seated. As has already been said, happy Father's Day to each one, to those that are watching online and with us out there. Thank you for being with us today. Uh, give a special shout out to Bo Wood, who is watching from out in Colorado this morning. One of our warriors is here. Everybody say hi, Bo. Hi. Amen. Your church family in Willow Springs love you, and we're glad you're with us today, as well as others that are watching. Um, God bless you. So this is a really big week. Uh, not just uh, Father's Day today and recognizing that and, and, uh, and all that is, is, is associated with that. And we're going to recognize those fathers that are here today. Uh, but this is camp week. Everybody say pray. pray. How many, now listen, now, now that, wasn't, that wasn't supposed to be ugly now. That was, you know, well, maybe. Uh, listen, you have, to win, you have to win the war in the spirit before you win it in the natural. You have to, you have to win it in, in prayer. And so... Um, I don't know what the number is exactly right now. Uh, last week when we had our uh, camp staff meeting, we were at about 120 kids already registered. Isn't that a great week? And it's already paid for. No kid. Yeah, that's good. That's, yeah, all good. You guys paid for that on the first Sunday of June. That whole offering uh, took care of it, so camp is paid for. I have an answer for a question that nobody has asked me yet today, but here's the answer anyway. Yes, your child can go if they haven't been registered yet. We will never leave a child behind because um, they got registered late or this, that, or whatever. Jesus spoke these words to us. He said, don't you forbid these little kids to come to me. Amen. And so it's not going to be forbidden. So the answer is yes. So if that is a question, if you're watching online, say, I, I didn't get them registered, you can go on online and you can register the kids there and we will make sure that they have a glorious and powerful week in church camp. Amen. We're going to pray for that. Thank you again from your pastor's heart uh, to each one of you for making that available where any child can go. Um, dads, moms, <laughs> Some of my favorite people in the world. Turns out I had two of those, a, a mom and a dad. Not, you know, anyway. Uh, whoa. It's tough when you got a smart mouth and nothing else to go along with it, you know. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 6. I want to read something from the Word of God that is absolute truth to us. Um, Ephesians chapter 6, and we're going to read verses 1 through 4. And um, this, this word uh, concerning the commandment of God, the fifth commandment, it is the first commandment with promise. Everybody say, with promise. It's a commandment with a promise. In other words, if you do this, God says, this is what I will do. And so this is part of that covenant that we're in with him. And so we, family has been since Genesis, the plan of God for man, family. And there has been such a huge attack uh, against family, against children, um, from the very time of uh, before a child is even born in this world today, they're in great danger. Um, and you can read several different occasions. Listen, don't you find it interesting in Scripture that every time God was to send a great deliverer, that there was a, there was a mass murder of children? And I want you just to think about it. When Moses comes along, deliverer, I mean, I know there was a lot of babies got killed, right? Whenever Jesus comes along, a lot of babies got killed. How many of y'all believe Jesus came? How many of y'all believe he's coming back? And there's a lot of children being murdered today. And that's just what it is. And so there is an attack against our children. There is an attack against mothers and fathers, the family unit. And, and I know that goes without saying it's that's so obvious. You can see that in the world today. Listen, Satan fights what he fears. He fights what he fears. And because the family is the institution of God, he's going to come against your children. And from birth on all the way through to some of the things that we're seeing now, when did it ever become an argument about parental rights? Huh? I, but here, here we living in a world now where the state thinks they can do a better job raising my kids than I can. I don't think so. God didn't give them to you. All right. And so anyway, so those are some of the battles that we're familiar with. And so we're going to look at the word of God. And here's what I want to say. We've already recognized the mothers last month. And, and, and that's a really big deal. And we're including that in this passage today. Fathers, first of all, I have great respect for you, and I appreciate you so much. Godly fathers are absolute difference makers. 
whenever you look at scripture, Jesus said these words, every house that's divided against itself can't stand. And then he keeps following on with that thought process all the way to where he comes to every nation that's divided against itself. Nations are built one house, one family, one home at a time. Every city divided against itself. And so we go from the family home to the city to the nation, right? And so, and it starts, listen to me, dads. By God's design, by God's design, you're the provider and you're the protector. You are the pastor of your home. And so step up, step up. And that's just exactly what Pastor Scott was talking about earlier. Listen, you can't control a lot of the things that come against your family, but you can control your effort. You give this everything you've got because it's really important to God. Uh, let's read these words right here, and then I'm going to have the fathers come, and we're going to recognize them. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. This is right. If you're sitting by one of your kids, look over and tell them, you better pay attention right here, huh? On this one right here. This is right. This is right right all right most of them are downstairs already <clears throat> honor your father and your mother now listen to what he says which is everybody say it is, it is. it's the first commandment with a promise it's the fifth commandment but it's the first one that has a promise here's the promise that's associated with it that it may be well with you i mean i want it to be well with your kids with your grandkids and so teach them obedience. Teach them to obey. Teach them that which is right. What they do with that as they become adults will be their responsibility. But they're not adults when they're given to you. Raise them up is what they go to in the next verse. He says that it may be well with thee. He's talking to the kids here. That it may be well with you and that you may live long on the earth. I want them to live, I want my kids and my grandkids to live long, blessed lives. Blessed people, blessed people. And I want them to do that a long time. How about you? Amen. And so we, we, we put effort into that. We work at that. Um, 37 years ago, uh, we were doing an overhaul uh, here in church governments when Marsha and I had began and, and we'd done an overhaul and we changed the name of the church um, it was just simply West Side Church, and, and, that, and that was okay. But we felt really compelled by the Spirit of God to include family life in the name of the church. And so that's why it is literally named West Side Family Life today. That's because it has been a focus. That family life has been a compass that has always kept us. It, it's kind of our true north. We're going to be focused on the family life, and it starts here, and we're going to come alongside, and we want to help. We want to bless those who are in the family business, which is all of us, right? And then that goes right on into the family of God. Look over at your neighbor and tell them, hey, family, right? That's the way it is, right? Hey, family, you know, whether it's blood or not, how many all know it's blood in Jesus, right? So it's blood. Okay. It's about family life. And hell hates anything that has to do with family or life. Okay. In these words, listen to this. So it can be well with you that you may live long on the earth. Fathers, provoke not your children to wrath. Mm. Some of the kids that will be at camp this this coming week we've been doing this for a long long time decades upon decades now some of the kids come from some of the very best homes so stable so consistent just absolutely wonderful wonderful home environments but because we open this up to other kids and to friends we we view it as an opportunity for evangelism as well and whenever you do that sometimes you have some kids from some really broken homes and broken lives and they come in and, and we look at kids, and while they're just kids, uh, you would be absolutely astonished. The teachers here, I'll guarantee you know, the school teachers here know what some of these problems are. Our school counselors that are here in this congregation know what are some of the problems that some of our children have to deal with. Amen. This week, listen to me, this week will be the best week of the year for some of these kids. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm just telling you this is what we're praying about. God make a difference in their lives. 
God will let them know that they're loved. And if they can't see that love from you at home, let them see it through these counselors. Let them see it through this camp, Lord God. And let them see it through this church family. Anybody say amen to that? Just live it, gang. See, that's what the life, that's, that's the practical aspects of being that light of the world. You fathers provoke not your children to wrath. Obviously, that must have been a thing and still is. But bring them up. Here's the two words, and I'm not going to go into a word definition for you, but I'm going to encourage you. Listen to me, fathers. Do a word study on these next two words. Bring them up in the nurture. Everybody say nurture. nurture. And admonition. You bring them up. You teach them. You train them. You correct them. You lead them. You guide them. And when absolutely necessary, use words. Your action speaks louder than your words. How many of y'all know we should model it, not just talk it? Hmm? Model it, not just talk it. So bring them up. Bring them up. Lift them up. Bring them up. If you're not walking at that higher level, it's going to be hard to bring them up. So he starts by addressing those that bring them down, right? Don't, 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 don't bring them to a point where they're in wrath, they're angry, they're upset. But bring them up in the nurture, the love, the comfort, the peace, the joy. But correction. Hmm? Correction. Um, I told um, when, when our grandson Grayson was born, uh, I, I told his mom and dad that I would never tell them no, no. Uh, we say no to no at Grandpa and Grandma's house now. And that I was sure when I was holding this little bitty guy, I was sure that he was the first child ever born without sin. I'm no longer convinced of that. <laughs> Would all the fathers come to the front? You know the, you know the process right here. What we want to sow into you though, on the altars, and if we don't have enough on the altars, we've got some more here on the front pew. We have a devotional for you. And we want you to come and get it. We want to sow the word of God into your life. So if all the fathers, grandfathers that are here, if you would please come. And uh, please come and, and get you a devotional. Hey, <laughs> He's watching. He's watching. Uh, come and get you a, a devotional, and we're going to have special prayer. Isn't this, isn't this a glorious sight? I want you to think about the power and the impact of this many godly men. Godly men. It's one thing to be a man. It's another thing to be a godly man. And I want to take just a moment to address you guys. There was a, there was, it was just like this in early service. It, 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 it was from side to side right here. And, and so I, I don't know uh, however many is up here, 30 or 25, 30, 40, whatever's here, same in, in, as in early service. You're a part, listen to me, men. You're a part of something that's God-ordained. God said it this way. He was very intense. Kind of Roy, thank you for serving. He's usually back and back taking care of business. Um, you're ordained of God. You're walking in a place in a position that God ordained from the very beginning. It's really important. It's really important. And um, I have nothing but respect and appreciation for your job. The sacrifices that you make. Um, it wasn't always easy for your dad, Pastor Scott, to be there time after time. Because he's a working man. And... Uh, he put a lot of effort into being there. And, uh, and it's the same for you. You don't get an easy walk on this one right here. I'll just be honest with you. When you read about all those men of faith, men of faith, um, all of them, I think, had in their sword and in their shield, I think less that they probably had some dents where the enemy had come against them and they shielded and they had some nicks in the fight and then the sword. I don't want to get into heaven and sit down beside some of these guys like Joshua and some of those guys like that and say, well, look at your pretty sword, DL. It ain't got a dent in it nowhere, huh? <laughs> huh? It's a fight, gentlemen. It's a war, but it's worth it. Your babies are worth it, and your grandbabies are worth it. Your family is worth whatever the cost. And you pay that price, and God's trusting you with that. And I'm excited to be a part of that. And this church, I want you to know you're not in it by yourself, but this church come alongside you. That's why we put family life in there. We'll walk it with you. Anybody say amen? amen. Put your hand up this way for those that are watching online. We're praying with you and for you as well. God bless you, fathers. We love you that's watching online. Father God, we thank you for these godly men. 
We're not perfect men in our own abilities, Lord God, but we're only perfect. We're only righteous through Christ Jesus and that exchange that he gave to us. We thank you for wisdom, and I pray for that wisdom for these men, Lord God. These are trying times. These are testing times. And we need godly wisdom to know how to lead our families, how to protect our families, how to feed our families, Lord God. Thank you, Father, for these godly men and wisdom. We pray for peace and we pray for joy as they walk this out before their families, Lord God. I pray that they would, they would model the peace of the Lord in their life, that they would model that joy by which we get our strength and that our children and grandchildren would see that, Father God, even in hard times or in frustrating, trying times, Lord God, that they could see Dad or they could see Grandpa in a way by which they are walking this thing out in a godly conduct, Lord God. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to shine as lights, not just in our families at home, but in our families at church and in our community, Lord God. We ask for your strength. We ask for your wisdom. And we give you thanks for these godly men, these fathers and grandfathers. We thank you for them. And we ask blessing upon their life. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone that agreed said amen. amen. God bless you guys. We love you. Thank you. Give them a hand. You seated. Amen. If there is some children here or a wife that would like to make sure that one of your husbands, uh, the father at home, gets one of these devotions, please come. We've got several left over, and uh, they have been purchased just to give them away, so we want to make sure that you get hold of one of those. Um, let's pray real quickly concerning church camp. And then Pastor Danny is going to share a word. Uh, we're still continuing for a couple, three more weeks in this In Him series. And Pastor Danny approached me uh, about a month or so ago and said, Hey, I really feel like the Lord has a word uh, that he wants me to share with the congregation. And um, that is our goal. I'm not in love with the sound of my own voice. It's, this is not my pulpit. This is God's house, his pulpit. And whoever he has given and anointed the word for, how many of y'all want to have something? Fresh manna, huh? Good, good heavenly bread. And so that's what we want. And so Pastor Danny's going to come and, and, and give you the word. He's going to be talking about walking in balance. It's such an important subject in our world today. Let's pray for church camp. Father God, we thank you for our staff. For our counselors, we thank you for the facility down there at Rock Garden. Lord God, we thank you for this week that we have to be able to just sow everything that we have, every drop of strength that we have into this camp, Lord God, to give it our all, that best effort like Pastor Scott was talking about, Lord God. We pray, Father, that those lives will be touched, they will be instructed, they will be encouraged, they will be strengthened, Lord God. And these young campers, Father God, will grow up. And we've watched it now for decades. Decades. A lot of the children that we have seen come through camp are now adults with families of their own, Lord God, and they're raising them in church. Thank you for them, Lord God. We ask your blessing now upon every aspect of camp 2024 in Jesus' name. Everyone agreed, said amen. Make Pastor Danny welcome our senior adults pastor, Pastor Danny Hicks. We love you. Thank you, man.